Well, it's important because, well, it's just, it's knowledge, the knowledge of numbers. Um, the algebraic numbers are the ones that we've, we're the most familiar with. But in a sense, there's hardly any of them compared to transcendental numbers. Algebraic numbers are actually countable or listable is another way of saying it. So it's actually quite a small infinity. It's the smallest infinity. But on the real number line, you've got a bigger infinite. It just so happens that most of the numbers on the real number line are transcendental. And we didn't know that until we discovered transcendental numbers. So this is really recent information in terms of the long history of maths that humanity has been covering over 2,000 years. This is a new fact. And what this meant, the, transcend the, the transcendence of pi, I like that, the transcendence of pi, actually answered some really interesting questions. There were some really old questions that the Greeks had about squaring the circle. Okay, so how can you make um, a circle of a particular area, turn that into a square? And there was lots of ways that they tried to do it with straight edge and compass. But all those things, every attempt they do, actually ends up being an algebraic equation, right? So they were saying, how can we turn pi, so pi is linked to that, how can we turn pi um, into another thing by using algebra? Well, it just it shows that you can't because it's transcendental. There's something really tricky going on. And that's why I like it, because the, the, the tricky stuff is where all the awesome maths is. Well, the thing is with pi, Pi is about perfection, and there are no perfect circles in our universe, none. So we don't really, you don't need pi per se. You can get by with 3.14, or like, you know, 29 digits to do like the biggest theoretical ring around the universe or something like that. So, and anything that truncates, like any decimal that ends is a fraction, because it's just that number divided by one with how many zeros. And so we're dealing with fractions. There's, you know, fractions. We know how to deal with fractions. There's a difference between dealing with big numbers and dealing with these very strange numbers. But see, this stuff is just to do with maths. But uh, just to show you the power of it, I mean, the construction of, say, Euler's identity, I mean, this thing is all hanging together with infinitely sharp perfection. Like, it's not, it's not a number near e or a number near pi. I mean, these are the numbers. And there is a specific value for that. So it's really, really important we get these things right. <laughs> in maths, perfection is important. But then anyone who uses maths for physics or chemistry or whatever you want to do, you know, then they can kind of use approximations. I'm not interested in approximations.